Hello, everybody, and welcome to another edition of our Community Access. This week, we will feature with you an extremely artist in Oxford, and his name is Gary Elserman. Then, we went to the first annual Small Business Expo held at Boulder Point. All today at our Committee Access. Our Friday night fish at the Oxford American Legion Hall. It's delicious. We love the Legion. They have great fish and good family fun. American Legion fish fry. It's awesome. And the drinks are good. The food is good. The service is awesome. Welcome back. This week, we will visit with Gary Elserman. Now, Gary is an outstanding artist, but just an artist, but as a chainsaw artist. With the story, it's our reporter, Terry Stiles. Terry? Anybody that's been on Baldwin Road knows he's here, and we've been here a couple times to say hi. We are with Gary Elzerman today, and we're checking in. It's been a while since we've talked with you, and what I'm seeing coming out of you is just getting more and more remarkable. Oh, you know, it's 20 years, and you know, with the economy being the way that it was, and uh, things are looking up here, and especially in Oxford, you know, Michigan. Right. So, uh, back to carving some fun pieces and. You know, it's a matter of people can, can they afford the artwork. So uh, I think that's a big thing. And just you know, I've done over seven thousand carvings. So it's if you don't get better, then you better get out. In the state of Michigan, well, recently I saw um, it was a, a pirate and a pirate. octopus. What was that all about, Gary? Um, that was just, a, believe it or not, a, one of my big collectors uh, bought a place on Harson's Island and uh, uh. wanted a octopus protecting a treasure chest and actually had a red wing logo on it the lock and then the pirate had a Detroit Tigers patch on yeah. it he's a big fan of the sports teams and so uh, very unique and uh, very large the octopus was actually 15 feet sprawling uh, and the pirate was you know over life size so uh, it was huge it was fun getting it out to Harsons Island so oh, I I bet. Say that, so. It was fun watching you, driving by and watching your progress. For those of you who don't know, who may be new to the Oxford area, Gary Elzerman is a carver extraordinaire. Four times state championships yeah. in carving competitions, right? Yeah, four time Michigan state champion. Yeah. Unbelievable. Are you still doing competitions? No, I haven't done competitions for probably over 10 years. So. It just got to the point that uh, you know the competitions and the traveling and everything else, it just mm -hmm. yeah takes became, away from home. yeah takes away from mm -hmm. home. So yeah. two growing children and a wife. Yeah, that um, yeah, I imagine yeah. you don't get to spend a lot of time with when you're deep in your carving either, right? Well, you know the nice thing about the carving is that it's right here, you're home. so I'm home, mm -hmm. and you know it's been a you know it's been nice because. I'm able to go to pretty much anything I want to go to, such as, you know, the kids' the sports, kids. you know. Uh, you know, Connor's going to be graduating uh, this year from Oxford, and my daughter Nicole's a sophomore. Uh, and she's a volleyball player. He's a basketball player. So it's been a lot of fun. So you've, pardon the pun, carved yourself a career, really, that um, I always hear if you find what you love, trying to make a career out of that. You've been able to do that. Let's go back to how that happened. Well, you know, basically, uh, the big thing is that uh, I was diagnosed with dyslexia. Mm -hmm. And I found out that doing things with my hands, so... Made sense. Very, uh, yeah, you know, right. so from a very young age, I, I started actually playing with butter, carving butter. Oh. Um, 
and then of course I went to uh, became a chef and uh, did a lot of ice carvings, pumpkins, chocolate, and at the time that uh, I started my chainsaw carving, uh, I did it as a favor. Didn't even really want to do it. I was a chef at the time and doing ice, and you know I did did one carving on Lake Orion, and the next thing I knew I was you know doing it full time within from doing the one to going full time about three months, and I was. It was just swamped, so uh, it was one of those things that, like I said, I looked at my wife and I said, you know, mm. you, you, should I be a chainsaw carver? <laughs> and, you know, it worked out. <laughs> the next know? step up right. from ice, right? Right, yeah, it's just, you know, and wood's, wood's a fun medium, you know. I, mm. I love wood because there's no two pieces of the wood the same, kind of like humans, you know. It's mm. a living organism and you get to actually uh, repurpose it instead of it just, mm -hmm. you know, Right. If a tree dies, it doesn't have to just go to firewood or smoke, pulp right. or whatever, landfills. Um, so, yeah, I, I really enjoyed it. Let's talk about the wood for a second. I know there's different types. Do you use all wood from Michigan, or have you had it shipped in, or does that depend on your client or your preference? Basically, here in Michigan, you know, I, I like to use white pine. Mm. Uh, white pine is our state tree, mm -hmm. and pretty much... I'll carve any type of wood here in Michigan. Say you had an oak tree at your house mm -hmm. that, that died. I would come and actually carve it. There's a few woods you don't want to carve because they just don't have longevity. Oh. Uh, for instance, uh, a cottonwood. It's really not a tree. Oh, it's sure. a weed. Soft. People right. don't know. And it's not, you know, okay. it never, know it just, it's a weed and uh, the weather would rot it. Mm -hmm. So uh, pine seems to last one of the longest things out, you know, woods that we have here in Michigan. Mm -hmm. uh, there was talk of me actually getting a, a large piece of redwood from California for a client, but it was going to cost like $15,000 to get it out here. Oh, so wow. It became mm -hmm. sort of... Prohibitive. Yeah. Mm -hmm. we don't, we're not fortunate to have big five-feet trees and, you know, six-foot no. diameter trees here in Michigan. So really you have to work with the size of the logs that we mm -hmm. have here. Yeah, that's a whole other conversation. Uh, we're lucky that we have trees in Michigan because exactly. it's such a logging state. Do you have a preference? Like I said, yeah, pretty much, you know, the white pine, uh, the spruce. And the reason being that, one, it's light. you got to figure that if I had a large piece of oak and I carved that, a, a four-foot bear and a four-foot bear out of pine, the oak's four more times dense. So me, you, and Bill couldn't lift it. Ah, right. And so you're, you do this solo, speaking of that. You, Correct. Do you have an apprentice or anything? No, you know, over the years a lot of people have asked, but, to, you know, I'm, I'm always... Uh, willing to share my knowledge. Mm -hmm. The only thing is, uh, it's a chainsaw, and mm -hmm. you know, uh, you don't get you only get one shot. If it, mm -hmm. if it bites you, if you get cut by a chainsaw, it's usually pretty bad. And yeah. uh, it's one of those. It's just there's a lot of ifs and what. So no, it's one of those things. That, sure. You know, I, don't, I don't want my kids doing it. I'll put it to you that way. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of liability involved. So talking, speaking of the piece of wood itself, and we're sitting by. Quite an enormous piece of wood. Yep. What do you see? How do you come up with the visions that you have? Are you working on what your client wants or a drawing or something in yeah. your head? I hear a lot of people say, oh, I just look at the wood and it speaks to me and it becomes a mermaid, etc. How does that happen? What's that process? The process basically for me now is I, you know, I used to have to carve. I used to start off carving bears, you know, things like that. Mm. But now it's... I have 99% commissioned work. So, for instance, nice. you know, the octopus or the pirate mm -hmm. or the things that you'll see at the studio today, these are all sculptures that are going out. So more so it's about picking the wood for the size, the diameter, and the height of the carving. Uh, but that they've requested. Right, right. Okay. For instance, you know, like today uh, I had a small eagle to carve. Okay, just a perched eagle that a lady's going to put on a tree. Mm -hmm. Where now I've got a big howling wolf with the moon scenery. Uh, for a guy that I'm matching his tattoo. So, oh you know, the, the neat thing about the progression of work has been uh, you're not limited to coming to me and going, oh, you know, a bear, you know, like yeah, you would see yeah, up north. Yeah. I'm nothing wrong with that. But, you know, now it's things like uh, I just finished a, a beautiful uh, carving of four different birds in a tree, and each one of the birds has a personality like their children. So each one represents one of their children. So, 
that's <sighs> that's the neat thing about where my artwork's yeah, gone is that true. there's there's nothing that I won't sculpt. Okay, so, that was my next question. Is anything to? Well, I've done likenesses of people, um, all the way down to the whole Winnie Pooh collection. It really. I've seen that. Right. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, I I do get some pretty different uh, calls. I just carved a couple likeness of horse heads that were grave markers. So. Oh, lovely. So, like I said, yeah. it's just uh, whatever you can think up, I can pretty much carve. So. And your talent is tapping into that emotion. Well, yeah, of because what right, they need, what they need from exactly you. because it's just not a bear. Yeah, you know, you'll get people that stop by and uh, are looking for a gift that you know mm, for mm -hmm. somebody. But generally, the people mm -hmm. that get my artwork today are are looking for something that obviously they can't get at Walmart or sure. any other place. And uh, a great one that I just finished up, which the community should be so excited about, is we have the big Lake Orion Oxford sure. football game coming up Friday. Mm -hmm. And so they approached me, and they wanted a, a trophy that would go back and forth. Oh, nice. So mm -hmm. on one side, I've got a Lake Orion. One side, I've got an O and a football. So whoever wins, they just put this, that side out. Perfect. So it just, Now, did it, you design that, or is that... I designed it, right. Oh, so, yeah, it. So, something like that it right. just kind of comes to me. You know, like I said, it, that's the fun process. And you can't really draw anything like that because a lot of times things change. I give people a, an idea. They say, give me a wolf or look at this. Um, and then I say, you got to give me some freedom because the wood might tell me to do you something bet. different. And do you have a favorite out of it? I know you've, you said 7,000 people in the state of Michigan have your carvings. Do you have a favorite? Well, the, the octopus was pretty cool. <laughs> that was pretty I darn probably, good. <laughs> I, I probably had a thousand people uh, oh my stop goodness. and take in pictures. Oh, well, you know, people have a real emotion to, to bigger mm -hmm. carvings, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, some of my favorites are always the inspirational story where I mm -hmm. carved, I carved uh, four wolves coming out of flames. Uh, it looked like the, the flames were busting these small wolves, and then there was a big wolf come busting out, and it was a story yeah. of a lady that had lost four children. And oh then they had goodness. a child, and that child rising out of the flames was their, their, their child. Right? So it was very emotional. Those, those are emotional kind of things when you carve things like that, or I say, you know, things that really bring something to people's mm -hmm. heart. So, right. Or inspire. Yeah. And you do. I, yeah. I, I have been fortunate enough to watch you go from across the road yep. to over here and seen many and many, many of your carvings. And I guess I should thank you for everybody in Michigan, <laughs> at least, that has your carvings. What next? What's too big for you? What, what's your next goal? What do you want to... What is your ultimate if, if you had a month to do it in? What would you do? Uh, you know, pretty much, like I said, once again, it's not even so much a goal. You know, the thing is, is that I've been doing this 20 years. Mm -hmm. I'm getting older, unfortunately. <laughs> um, you know, the body starts to... It's a tough job. Right, you know, yeah. not fun lifting us off for eight mm -hmm. hours. But mm -hmm. the bottom line is, is that I'd rather do nicer pieces than just, mm -hmm. the, the, you know, the everyday just grind so souvenir pieces right. right yeah so i'd rather carve something that means something to somebody uh but you know every day is a new, new a new challenge you know i mean i've got a wonderful eagle that i just finished up for uh detroit country day uh, mm -hmm. middle school mm -hmm. and it was just kind of a funny thing because i put it out at the road and just so people could view it that's you know a lot of times the pieces out there are just so Inside. people can see different mm -hmm. things, and they, they go to the, where they need to go. But all of a sudden, with September, I didn't even think about it because it was near September 11th, and it was like oh, an onslaught. Oh, good timing so, for that. Yeah. Well, yeah, and then all of a sudden, next thing I knew, I got four more commissioned eagles. So, so it kind of goes that way. So now i got to carve four more eagles, and that's when it kind of becomes the grind. You know, it's not yes. the people see something, but they love it. Right. But then it's like, well, that's what I want. So... But I have a feeling you have a need to um, satisfy what the people need from you. Right. I think I think you can say that you you want to slow down a bit, but um, I think emotionally or in your heart, you're not going to be able to do that for a while. And I'm grateful for that because I like seeing you around here. I love yep. driving by, and um, I want to wish you continued success. And thank you for joining us on our Community Access Oxford Television. Well, I really appreciate what you guys do and help with the community and actually uh, cover all the events and 
You guys do a great job also. Thank so, you. Yeah. We're working together, all of us there in the same go. community. <laughs> Bill, I'm going to look around at Gary's carvings, and um, I might not make it back today. <laughs> Good job, Terry. Also, this story is going to see on Michigan Magazine all throughout the state of Michigan. How about that? Next up is the first annual Small Business Expo held at Boulder Point. With the story is our reporter, Andy Curtis. Andy? All right, thanks, Bill. We're here at Boulder Point at the Small Business Expo. We're going to walk inside and talk to a few of our small local businesses around Oxford. All right, first we're stopping by the Nerium International booth, talking with uh, Robin, who is one of the business partners for this company. Brand partner. Brand partner from the company. Do you mind telling us a little bit about no, Nerium International is a uh, anti-aging cream, uh, if, I, if I'm understanding right? Yep anti-aging skincare company. Um, they were developed by um, a company doing cancer research and ended up seeing great results with skin with the tightening and firming and getting rid of fine lines and wrinkles and so I tried it as a customer okay. and loved it you know and so I decided to get into the business and share it with other people. How uh, wide-ranging is this business? I mean, when we were speaking earlier, you said you're just about to get into Canada and Mexico, I think? Right, right. They just started in Canada, okay. and we're entering uh, Mexico, and they're planning on doing a country every three months. Wow. Yeah, so it's going global. And that um, product will be called um, Optimira. Okay. Yeah, so pretty cool. Yeah. Now, uh, touch a little bit more on the cancer roots that right. this had. Now, it started by uh, kind of an offshoot you mentioned of uh, cancer treatments or potential cancer treatments and you guys are still involved in giving back to that. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, Jeff Olson was approached by Nerium um, when they were doing their cancer research for skin cancer they noticed that they were getting great results with um, doing healing for the skin and so they approached them to do a skincare company from it. So we also give back to um, cancer research uh, Pro profits go to that and also to Big Brothers Big Sisters. Oh, that's great. Yeah. That's, and that's real great. he participates with um, Live Happy, the magazine, okay. and is promoting happiness around the world just because we all need that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're telling me. <laughs> now, can you, where, can, um, where can this product be found? I see a couple of magazines laid out here that it's, I'm sure that it's been uh, um, featured in, but if I'm interested in being age defiant, where can I pick up uh, this cream? From brand partners, like from myself. Mm -hmm take my card, <laughs> look me up, um, but the, in the businesses, um, the magazines that we're in, our success magazine, which for businesses it takes a long time to get into those, we've been featured in it in three times in three years, oh. so that's awesome. Yeah. But yep, just looking on the internet, there's lots of information on Nerium. We do a lot of um, just direct sales, you know, relationship marketing. And if somebody's watching this right now and want to get a hold of you specifically, how would they do that? Uh, Robin Licht at Neriam.com. Right, thank you, Robin. Now we're here with Dana, who is an independent consultant for Sensi Products. Dana, thanks for talking to us. Thank you very much. Do you mind telling us about, uh, to me, to the untrained eye, these look like electric candles. Now, how far off am I? You're pretty far off. <laughs> <laughs> They're actually wickless warmers. Okay. Um, all the wax is melted with the help of a light bulb. Mm -hmm. You do plug them in, either with a cord or the ones that are smaller, you could plug in just directly to the wall. Oh, okay. So the wax melts at the top and there is no flame, so it's very safe. I've actually spilled them a few times and you don't get burned. Yeah, no, that's a huge issue. I know, I was, because candles are a pretty cost-effective way to get rid of stink in your house, which I have to do a lot, but you know, uh, I will admit that I have lit newspapers on fire accidentally <laughs> while being around one. So this is not an issue, which is great. Right, absolutely. And you know, it's, it's safe. Mm -hmm. um, there's lots of other products other than just the warmers. Okay. You can actually buy bath and body products. Um, love their lotions. They have hand creams. They have things for laundry as well. Mm -hmm. So there's, there's also scented tins that I have on my table here for sale. And you can open them up just a little bit and it will fill the room with a scent. So right. if you travel, you go to a hotel, mm -hmm. Even in your car, you could have a travel tin with you. Um, they have stuffed animals that you could put a little sachet mm -hmm. inside. You could also put that inside a drawer. And so there's endless possibilities with Sensi. That's great. I, that's, I love the idea of, it's kind of like a souped up air freshener for your car. Because I know when I buy air fresheners, just a traditional kind, 
they last maybe a week and then it's back to having the windows rolled down all the time? Yeah, no, these last forever. I've had tins that last up to six months and you can open them, close them. Um, we also have the scent circles for your car as well. So it looks like the traditional air freshener, right. but they last forever. Um, the bars, I have a little graphic here. The bars are definitely worth it once mm -hmm. you purchase the warmer, but you can also purchase in package deals. Okay, great. If you, it's called Combine and Save, and mm -hmm. it's on my website, which I'll mention later on. But you can see that you know, 12 bars give you 840 hours for about $80 versus a regular candle that would be $300. Okay. And I've actually had bars where I just put one little cube inside. They last for months. And you just you can turn it off, turn it back on, reuse them as long as you want to. And you can actually combine scents too. Um, a lot of people buy two different bars mm -hmm. and you put a block from each bar inside and it'll melt wow. and it'll create its own unique scent. Yeah. So I have um, scent recipes too. <laughs> That's actually pretty cool. This sounds like a real cost effective and actually safe alternative to candles. Absolutely. Absolutely. Do you want to throw out, you mentioned your website, phone number. How can people reach you if they sure. want to buy one of these? Okay. My phone number is 586 484 1496. Mm -hmm. And I have a website through Sensi. It's HTTPS or <laughs> HTTPS <laughs> colon backslash ddaw.sensi.us. But I think if you just do the ddaw, D A W, dot sensi.us, you'll be able to find me. I think that's a safe bet. Yeah. All right, well, thanks for talking with us today. Thank you. All right, we're here with Jim from Odd Job Disposal located in Oxford. Jim, thanks for talking with us. Uh, hi, nice to see you guys. Now, what exactly is Odd Job Disposal? Odd Job Disposal, we do a weekly trash pickup, recycling, and we do front loads for uh, local businesses. Okay. Uh, and uh, we're based out of Oxford. What exactly is a front load? The front load is where the guys come in, and, and it's like a, it could be a two-yard, four-yard, six-yard, eight-yard. It's like a dumpster. Oh, Usually okay. you see it at businesses, and then the truck comes in and right. just lifts it and dumps it up. Okay, great. And so and it's just uh, small businesses? Uh, do you do residential, all that kind we of stuff? We do the residential and, and the small business both. Yeah. Okay, great. And if somebody wants to get a hold of you, how would they do that? Uh, they could call us at the office. Uh, our basic number is 248 six two eight seven four four seven uh we're there from eight to five monday through friday and you guys have a website by any chance facebook uh, we do it it's uh our job disposal at gmail.com and you are a local business how long have you guys been in oxford for uh we've been uh based with this for about 10 years oh wow yeah and it's always has it been family owned i remember you mentioned always, that it's your son's business yeah it is all family yeah okay, that's great yeah and too we were talking a little bit about how we did the softball games during the summer and we definitely saw your team sponsors more than once. Yeah, we were very involved with the community as far as, you know, putting in, sponsoring the kids right. and taking care of that kind of stuff. Sure. Yeah, that's fantastic, especially for local businesses to stay local. That's great. Sure. Yeah, it works out really nice. All right, well, thank you for talking with us, right. sir. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. All right, we're here now with Brianna. She's the founder of the Lake Orient Oxford Small Business Group. Brianna, thank you for talking with us, and thank you for putting this on. Oh, thank you guys so much. I'm hoping that it's great for all of the vendors here and just wanted to some more support our local business and get the word out there about all the great things we have here in our community. It's a one-of-a-kind community and mm -hmm. it's absolutely amazing. So I'm grateful for the turnout and happy you guys are here as well. Yeah, oh, so are we. And just with the turnout, I'm really impressed. It's pretty wall-to-wall -wall in here with booths. It is. And we actually had to turn about 100 vendors away from the show. We had a lot of people that wanted in. Um, I didn't want it to be too crowded. Mm -hmm. And we would just want it, with our, it being our first annual I did everything myself. I should have asked for more help. <laughs> um, but I think it turned out really great. And I mean, the entire community has been behind this 100%. All of the vendors that are here have been helping in huge ways. Mm -hmm. Everyone has gone above and beyond as far as even going out to help hang signs and banners. It's, we all, it's all about supporting each other, helping spread the word about the businesses. A lot of them are stay-at-home moms, right. and this is how they make their income. Right. So it's a great way to help everybody. Now, you were saying about how this they're all members of the Oxford Lake Orient Small Business Group. Uh, yes. How does someone get involved in that? What are the benefits of being in the group? Uh, you know, general things like that. Right. Um, it's uh, Right now, it's um, a Facebook group. Okay. So it's under Facebook, and you would just search for the Oxford Lake Orient Small Business page. Mm -hmm. um, you do have to request to be on it. It's not an open page. It's right. a closed group. 
Um, the benefits of being on it are you network with other businesses, you get in touch with um, events quite like this. Mm -hmm. There's more coming up in the future as far okay, as great, great. wedding expos or things oriented towards a specific um, business. Mm -hmm. um, but like I said, you network with so many businesses, people, people throw your name out there for each other. You can look for a business that you're looking for and everybody will send you quotes immediately. I mean, it's just really, really nice because it's basically like having a yellow page, but you talk to the person right then and there. Right. So, and it's absolutely amazing. Everybody is so kind. It's, so you just kind of get the word out there and you help each other. It's a great, 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 great site and, and group. And how, again, can somebody get uh, involved in this if they're a small business here in Oxford? You would just go to the Facebook page and just um, click to request and I would approve it. If it was a, a legitimate business, and okay. then it would be approved. And so there's not a lot of like prerequisites that someone that just basically have to be a small business and have to be located in Oxford or Lake Orion. Oxford or Lake Orion, um, a few of the surrounding areas, you know, right. especially if they live here. Okay. I've gotten requests from out of state people. Obviously, there's no need for them in right. our group, but we like to keep it with the community and and we like to keep it local. So that's what we try to do is support everybody here in Oxford and Lake Orion and. Help our community grow. There's so many oh, yeah, ways that yep. people will say, um, Misty Morris from Century 21, mm -hmm. she is very involved in the schools. So she'll constantly say things like, would you like to donate? Would each business like to donate something for um, Lake Orion schools mm -hmm. or Oxford schools? And everybody jumps in. Right. Oh, I can do this. I'll do this. So it's just, we try to help the entire community as a whole. That's fantastic, and especially small businesses, and I'd say they need all the help they can get, but, I mean, networking is so important. It is, and, and I'm blessed with the people that I have on the group. All of these amazing people that are here today, they are just the most amazing, kind-hearted business owners right. who look out for each other, and I couldn't have asked for a better turnout for something that I thought would probably just never go anywhere. So it's, it's nice. It's great. That's, and we appreciate you putting it on as being a you know, residents of Oxford like we are ourselves. It's, it's great. You. Well, and you know, it, is there any other way uh, people can reach you, phone number, reach you, or, or reach the, uh, the group besides the Facebook page? Is there a phone number, website, any other events coming up here in the future? Um, I don't have a website up yet. I have my personal website, which is www.brianna-danielle.com. Okay. And I will post upcoming events on there as well. Um, right now, it's just the Facebook page that okay. we have going but I plan to do more in the future with how big it's getting. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So I'm, I'm getting there. It's slowly growing. Like I said, it hasn't even been a year yet. So, And this is actually our first annual mm -hmm. small business show. So it's going to be a yearly thing. And are there, uh, is there a place people can go to see? Uh, yeah, the Facebook page is open for everybody to view because you know, we just didn't have time to interview everybody here that, uh, that came out to promote their small business. So if somebody's right. watching this and they want to see some of the people involved in this group, they can go to the Facebook page, right? They can actually go to my page. I'll be posting pictures of okay. the event on there. Great. The Facebook page, I keep it closed because I don't want negativity. Okay, perfect. Um, that's how we kind of screen people. And some of the businesses, if they're offering a deal, you don't want a competitor to try to swoop up from underneath you. So right. that's why I said we look out for each other. Mm -hmm. um, but if they request to join, I mean, they'll be on there. They'll be part of the networking, part of the group. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. That's, it sounds perfect for a small business in an area like Oxford. And thank you for doing it, and thank, thank you for having you. us here today. Thank you guys so much. I'm so glad that you came. Thank you. All right, so from the Small Business Expo here at Boulder Point in Oxford, I'm Andy Curtis, and back to you, Bill. That was a great first small business expo. Well, that's all the time for this week. We hope you enjoyed our program. So, for our reporters and Andy Curtis and reporter and editor Terry Stiles, I am Bill Service and do not miss My Life with John Ogin. And it is next on our community television. This is Connie again from Connie's Kitchen, coming to you from Treetop Lodge, the place where magic happens and unicorns roam freely. Of course, you have to come to the lodge to understand about the unicorn thing, but they're everywhere. We'll be doing a wide variety of cooking shows here on Oxford Community Television, and I personally would like to thank the crew for coming out and giving me this opportunity to share my passion and what I love to do with you from Connie's Kitchen. So please join us on Oct TV 
join us at the lodge and look for us all over the town. And if you see unicorns, they probably came from here. See you soon.